before we get started on today's show, I want to invite you to click all the links in the pod underneath, uh, especially click the YouTube channel. Never telling y'all to click. Check out the videos there. Let me just say it once, 6HM Production. I just want to remind you that you can save 10% on your order with Symphony of Balloons, a luxury balloon company that also offers a 360 camera. Just simply mention you heard about them on Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Break It Down with Brian H. So, folks, Twitter, (laughs) social media, places where things live forever. I was doing some digging as I was looking up what I wanted to talk about the beginning of this week. And the thing I came across was Usher and Meg Fox. Both of them deleted all of their social media posts. Now, it has been said on social media that both of them have been heavily involved with Sean Combs, Diddy. We talked about him earlier. Well, I should say last week. Yeah, it's a Sunday. I'm recording while my Ravens are playing my former team, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, This is a game that I always look forward to. But, you know, I just I wanted to create content. It is crazy because Tom Brady's on the call, but I've been watching a lot of football mute this year. I'll catch the highlights. But that's another story. So I find it very interesting that both of them deleted all their social media posts. So it's even two things. Do they not want to be associated with him? Do they not ride with him till the wheels fall off? Or are they hiding something themselves? That's the thing. Uh, It's very, very strange. This whole Diddy situation. It's been crazy, man. And and Cat Williams said 2024 was going to be that year. Nobody, I don't think anybody saw this coming. And I started thinking. And I thought about something that's very unfortunate. And that being Diddy, Bill Cosby, Vince McMahon, Hulk Hogan, all of them have something in common. They were icons. Pivotal game changers put people in position or was in position to. But yeah, you know, I'm going to say even Hogan's case, right? He put people in position to exceed expectations. Whether you want to talk about his friends like Bruce the Barber Beefcake and, you know, the Nasty Boys or Big Show or just his being him being a wrestler. Though Vince put the people in position. Hogan was the person on the ground doing the leg work and boom, now wrestling hit a different boom period. Right? Like this shirt I'm wearing. We don't know who the ultimate warrior is or Randy's macho man, Randy Savage, in the light that we know them if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon. But the things they did in the dark, (laughs) uh, man, it came out in the light and it's very, very unfortunate. And um, yeah, Usher... I'm very interested to see what happens, you know, like I said, and it's crazy because we live in a world now, you can't just delete your social media history and people are like, oh, you know, like as soon as it happens, it's almost like people be like, wait a minute, you know, and I've had people say they deleted tweets. Me personally, I haven't only because I mean, like. I look back in history, right? And look back in life and I look at different periods of my life. I'm about to delete old posts. Yes, because maybe I said something crazy. Maybe I don't feel that way anymore. Or maybe I was, you know, I could be, you know, I'll be honest. I was ignorant to a situation. But sometimes I'll look at old posts just to see like, man, what was life like back then? Right? Now, in 2010, when I created this Twitter account, if you would have told me that this would have been a means of a resume, there's no way I would have believed you. I knew, and I should have, because at the time I worked at um, Best Buy, and when we would hire people or have interviews, we would go to Facebook immediately. So I should have saw Twitter coming, but for some reason, my 24, 20, 23, 24-year-old self thought, no, this is the safe haven, right? And I thought maybe Instagram, once, but Instagram is just pictures. And maybe, y'all remember notes? Thought maybe that was a little safer. But little did we know that all social media 
would become a part of your background check. You know, later on, when I was in a position where I was have, have say so on who would get be, who would be granted interviews or who would get hired. That was the thing we looked at social media. And I remember one of the managers didn't. And another manager looked at us like. What? You don't like that's very important. So it's just amazing and how far we've come. All right. Um, I want to send my condolences to the family of Tito Jackson. We all know Tito was the guy in the Jackson five who was, you know, playing the guitar and, you know, he had a funny name. So, you know, people would say, Oh, you be Michael Jackson. I'll be Tito and whatnot. But this week, his sister, Janet went viral because she said that she heard that the vice president and democratic candidate Kamala Harris wasn't black. And a lot of people didn't like that. She would apologize. Let's make sure we put that out there. She would apologize. But it was very unfortunate that you have somebody, a black woman from a very prominent black family, whether how we feel about the Jacksons or not, a very prominent black family talking bad about a president, a vice president candidate, a black woman who's a candidate. When there's always an option not to say anything, you know? And that's what a tweet I saw. Somebody said, dude, when will celebrities learn they don't have to answer the question? So especially when like we getting into this, checking people's race, you know, like, come on. We dealt with this with President Obama, where people would always talk about Oh, we don't know about his, you know, whether he's black or white or whatever. Like, bro, for goodness sakes, can we move on from that? So I was very disappointed to hear that from Janet Jackson, but I am excited. I should say I am happy that she did go back and say, you know what? I was wrong. I had misinformation and I apologize. And sometimes that's all it is, you know, but. I wanted to bring that up. I brought up the fact she said it. I wanted to bring up the fact that she did indeed apologize for that. I want to invite you to check out my mother's book, The Tears Behind My Smile. This book is a tribute to my uncle, but it's about not only celebrating his life, but it's also a reminder of how family and true love can endure even in the face of life's greatest challenges. So make sure you check out this book. You can find it on Amazon. The link is in the bio. The Tears Behind My Smile by Robin Waters. It's me, Queen PR, one half of those wrestling girls. And welcome back to another episode of Where Wrestling Meets Pop Culture. And this is the show where you find out who the current of Up Down Champion is. This is not the show where we speculate when Mercedes is returning to WWE. This is not the place for rumors and innuendo. This is the show where you find out where all your wrestlers are up to outside of the ring. One of my favorite couples, Bianca Belair and Montez Ford. We have been hearing, we knew that Bianca and Montez were filming a reality show with Hulu. I just have to have a moment for the IT family. Ladies and gentlemen, are you in the gym every week? Are you looking to kind of keep yourself cool while you work up a nasty sweat? Well, I got the best thing for you. Cooling bands, bandanas, cooling towels, and so much more. Go to Vertical Athletics, get your favorite team in MLS or MLB, or guess what? Now they have a custom option so you can upload your own logo and you can save 10% at checkout when you enter the code Brian H. Waters. Go to verticalathletics.com, use the code Brian H. Waters to save 10% on some of your best cooling gear. Well, let's give a shout out. Let me do a little Pat McAfee right here. Let's give a shout out to Asia Wilson. 
the unanimous WNBA MVP, the most valuable player in the league. As we get set for the playoffs now, like I said, I'm recording in the middle of a Sunday. The New York Liberty has already won. Matter of fact, let me check. Uh, let me check some scores because you know I was a little uh, watching the Orioles game. They lost, but. At the moment, I'm watching the Cowboys and the Ravens, and the Ravens are winning 21 to 3 with 12 seconds left in the second quarter. So we can really go to halftime. Uh, Lamar Jackson, almost perfect. You know, he's, he's almost perfect today. But currently, the Minnesota Lynx are up 56 to 42 over the Phoenix Mercury. We could be witnessing the end of a historic career in the next game with Diana Taurasi. Should the Mercury lose this game? Um, Asia Wilson will play later. The Connecticut Sun defeat the Indiana Fever, 93 to 69. The Liberty won 83 to 69. I think I've said this time and time again. The team I want to see in the WNBA Finals. And you know what? I can't get the matchup. So we're going to probably get the Liberty and the Aces in the next round. I would love, I would love to see, I would love to see the Liberty and the Minnesota Lynx. I think that's the matchup I think we're going to get. Um, so, but congratulations to Asia Wilson on winning MVP. This brings me to my next point. Speaking of MVPs, Brett Favre recently tried to sue Shannon Sharp for defamation. And just like Super Bowl 32, Brett Favre was not successful. Um, against Shannon Sharp with that, <laughs> uh, you know, um, Brett Favre, the, the ruling was Shannon Sharp did not defame Brett Favre's character defamation and, and law is complicated media law. I struggle. I got to be, but I struggle with it. Shout out to my homie, Kashana Davis. Oh no, excuse me. Kashana Davis Mays, because she got me through media law. A lot. It was a lot of drama in those classes. Uh, but uh, she helped me get through that. But media law was a lot. yo. <laughs> but one thing I learned, and if she's watching, she'll correct me. But from what I remember, defamation is always hard to prove, but it has to you have to stop somebody from making a living. So basically, if I get on here and I say something false about say my cousin, and then all of a sudden his YouTube numbers that he was his, he can't make money on YouTube no more because I said something false about him. Boom. We're in trouble. I, I defamed his character. He lost money based on my words. Therefore he can't make a living. He can sue me. That did not happen with Shannon Sharp. So Brett Favre, you're a loser. Once again, y'all know me. I never, never, ever care for Brett Favre. Maybe, maybe the Vikings years. And then when I rooted for him, he didn't win. That's because I wanted Adrian Peterson to win. And then he does all this stuff with, you know, y'all know what Brett Favre been doing. So, um, shout out to Shannon Sharp for keeping it done. I want to talk about players doing podcasts. Not the retired players. The current players. Because I genuinely want to know, what do y'all think? How do you feel about athletes doing podcasts? The reason why I asked this question is I was listening to the pregame show ahead of the Ravens and Cowboys game. And during that game, they talked about Michael Parsons and they played a clip. And he said he could possibly be spying Lamar Jackson. Well, so like, okay, so you're giving away part of the game plan. Maybe, maybe not. But I found I heard a lot of the um, analysts, especially like Rex Ryan, who was um, on the championship um, defensive coaching squad for the Ravens in 2000. Heard a lot of analysts. He was also the defensive coordinator of the team that went to the AFC championship game, Joe Flacco's rookie year. He said, that's the dumbest thing. And I'm like, are they really that crazy to give away the game plan? So then I started wondering, I said, how do we feel about athletes doing podcasts? Do we agree with athletes doing podcasts that are active during the season? 
You know, like, of course, we like having this access. They get to control the narrative. But if you're a fan of a team, how do you feel about it? So I wanted to bring that up. You know, I know Angel Reese has a new podcast and she's, you know, unapologetically Angel. So I just wanted to know what did the audience think about that? Before we get out of here, I want to ask a question to everybody. I saw this thing on Twitter. It was right after the PlayStation Pro was released. Or I should say the announcement of the PlayStation 5 Pro was released. And it was a wrestling account. So I was like, let me ask the general audience. What would you have first? A PlayStation 5 Pro or front seats to WrestleMania? If your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, somebody comes up to you and they say, look, you can have either or front row seats to WrestleMania or a PlayStation 5 Pro. Choose wisely. That's what I want to know. I'm not going to answer the question. I'll answer it on the next episode. Not going to answer the question. But I wanted to get out of here with that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this episode of Breaking Through the Glass Ceilings, brought to you by B-Waters Productions, where we preserve your life memories in high definition. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe to my podcast. Make sure you hit the subscribe to all the channels listed throughout this show. And remember... Do not let anyone place a ceiling above your success. So long, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to support this podcast by wearing a t-shirt, whether it's the one that says breaking through glass ceilings or the one that says no ceilings above success, simply go to foryourwear.com. Also, you can support some of your other favorite podcasts and content creators, including those wrestling girls, Seahawk, and the wrestling club. And you can support some of your favorite independent wrestlers, including Jay Bougie, Trisha Dora, Chaz the Dawn. Shoot, all the pure ignorance is on there. So go on foryourwear.com, go under the personalities, you'll find Brian H. Waters, and buy a t-shirt. And remember, I'll give you a shout out on the show. 